Together we have the power to protect the ocean. Yes we do. Yes we can. Hi, I'm Audrey Williams and you're tuned in to Jamaica Magazine. On the pages today, how you can play a role in protecting Jamaica's shoreline. Also, some important details on government's new textbook policy. Our education minister is providing answers on that and other issues. Stay with us. No son, a verb is an action word. Parents need to become more involved in their children's education. Parents are the first and in many cases the most important teachers. Read with your children, review their schoolwork, visit their school. Tapping and rapping and slapping, I said. Nice, I five. Woo! <laughs> A good education will never decay. Government is revising the textbook policy, so there are guidelines governing how books are selected for public schools. So far, a master list of supplementary textbooks has been developed, and parents are being encouraged to buy only books approved by the ministry. For more on these and other measures, we go to Ian Boyne and the Minister of Education on issues and answers. <music> Thanks for joining us for another edition of Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. Today we talk education. We have with us the Minister of Education, the Honorable Reverend Ronald Thwaites. He was speaking to us about several issues, but particularly the matter of the uh, thrust toward uh, a textbook program, toward a textbook program that benefits students and parents. And we will also touch on the issue of early childhood education. We thank you so much for your company. Minister, always good to, to chat with you on issues and answers. Thank you for having me. I, I think what you said in the sectoral presentation about the uh, particular approach that the ministry will be taking with uh, textbooks uh, has been welcomed by uh, many people because people have been complaining about a number of uh, what they consider unnecessary uh, books, burdensome on their pocket. Can you outline to us the, the, the rationale for the ministries? This is the theme that I've had in from when I was in opposition. Mm -hmm. As a member of parliament, you are presented with, with, with book lists for constituents uh, in, the, in the primary schools running into 8, 10, 12 books to be bought. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that you know that the government provides a textbook for every subject at the primary level and on loan for the secondary level. And it uh, has become unnecessarily burdensome, especially in hard times. And very often parents don't know which ones of these books to buy. Mm -hmm. And the books are seldom used or not used at all, and they're not transferable to another student, perhaps a younger child the situation w is ripe for reform. We, uh, we want young people to learn and, and read more than ever before, but that doesn't mean that you have to buy copious books. And so what we've said this year is that the Ministry of Education, the taxpayers, therefore, are spending uh, roughly a billion dollars to buy a textbook for every grade, for every child. One billion? One billion, yes. And we recognize, w well, first of all, those books are the core of what you need. Okay. There will be a workbook, perhaps two, in the primary schools that you can be asked to get, but that the price of those ought, at current prices, to be in the region of $5,000 plus. Dollars. Yes? Oh. And I'm not including the atlas and the dictionary and the mm -hmm. geometry set. Clearly not. Um, but those are once-off purchases. But the core additions, or the supplementary additions mm -hmm. to the core, would be in that range. And at the seven to nine level, it would be probably in the region of $12,000. And we haven't just decided on these books. Arbitrarily. No. <laughs> the, over a period of two years and more, we've gone to the teachers, to the 
core curriculum specialists and elicited their views as to the most effective books and said, well, these are the ones that are so good that we're going to provide them as a base. And these, uh, this is a list of books that if teachers desire, they can choose one or two to ask you to add to that. Most of this seems so commonsensical. One wonders why this approach wasn't adopted before. What were the obstacles to this? And I think the notion has been that um, the, the market would, would, would provide the best solution. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have no quarrel about people buying books. I encourage um, those who have gifts to give to children, mm -hmm. give them a book voucher, give them a book. Leisure reading is fine. We want to build up the school libraries. We want to uh, encourage the parish libraries yes. to be visited by students. Mm -hmm. So we want them to use their, their tablets, their smartphones, mm -hmm. whatever they have, to, to read more. But there has to be, particularly in these times, when we're asking our parents at the secondary level to pay auxiliary fees, when there's uniforms, lunch money, transportation, all the rest, and limited incomes, we have to be reasonable with each other. Mm -hmm. And we are not, we're not dumbing down education. On the contrary, we're saying concentrate on these books. They are enough. Mm -hmm. You recently met with uh, a number of publishers, uh, people in the book uh, industry. Uh, what were the main results of that meeting? Was some kind of compromise um, worked out? They seem to agree with the principle that I've outlined, but they said that there were some books that uh, ought to be part of the supplementary list that didn't appear. Mm -hmm. Could we please consider those? And of course we will. Yeah, but open that doesn't mean that the parents or the teachers are going to buy m uh, prescribe no. more books. Yes. It's just a larger range to, for them to choose one or two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Minister of Education, the Honorable Ronald Tewitt speaking to us about the critical issues under his portfolio. We take a break, but we'll be right back. How well do you know your child? What he or she likes or dislikes? Favorite food or color? How about who their friends are? Make the time. Get to know your child. It helps to build their relationship. Makes it easy to keep them safe and it helps their development process. Welcome back to the Minister of Education. The Reverend Ronald Thwaites is our guest on Issues and Answers today. Minister, you have put a lot of emphasis on early childhood education. I think about 18% of the recurrent budget uh, for your ministry is on early childhood um, education. Why is this so important? All the science we have and all of the intuition that parents and people of goodwill can bring indicate that a child's personality is formed in the first few years of yes, life. Right, they, yes. their, their brain capacity matures by grade, grade eight, or I'm sorry, by age eight, and therefore we need to bring into play the early childhood uh, sector mm -hmm. far more prominently than we've done in the past. The international estimates are that a dollar spent on early childhood education yields a dividend of 17, 17. times. Yes, um, you've heard Dr. Rain and others with this, and it's true. Yes. Uh, in the past, early childhood education was considered to be the purview of the church or the uh, nice lady who, who yes. kept keep kept and cared. Very often, did, doing a very good job. We have nearly three thousand early childhood institution in, uh, institutions. We're very fortunate in Jamaica. There's a place in our basic school or infant school for every single Jamaican child. Many developed countries don't have that. But we now have to ensure quality. quality. Basic school early childhood education is not f to learn times tables or to learn to read. It's to learn to love to learn, to play, to be ordered, to be cooperative, uh, all of those uh, social values, and to be ready for education. And so we're doing the following. First of all, we're ensuring that they have the best teachers, or better mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. soon to be the best. Only 30% of the teachers in early childhood institutions had any training. Mm -hmm. So we're offering training for many, many more, and trying to make one trained teacher available, either full-time or part-time, in every one of those institutions. We are merging a lot of those ineffective institutions because of size, because of 
poor infrastructure. Uh, to inf into infant schools, particularly uh, clustering them with primary schools where we have space. And very importantly, we are offering nutrition to those little children because mm -hmm. that's when uh, proper calories make the difference in, uh, in eventual growth and good learning. And we are standardizing the curriculum with the tremendous help of people like National Continental Corporation, mm -hmm. of the Gleaner, of, of the Observer, mm -hmm. and so many others. Yeah. Mr. So how are we doing in terms of competence in, in, in math and, and English? Uh, uh, better in English than in math, but still not acceptable. And uh, this is a real deficiency in our education system. There's no point in going on with all the other subjects, the geography, the history, the Spanish, um, the, the integrated science, and you can't read properly. And a large proportion of our young people are still leaving school without the capacity, it, the proper capacities. So we're saying, now, when you get to grade four, yes, which is the, the critical test, if the schools aren't doing well, if you aren't doing well, you need special attention. We're uh, realigning the education budget this year uh -huh. to afford more than 100 math specialists and more than 100 literacy coaches to go into the schools to offer special help, putting them in the weaker schools. Yes. Remember though that this is that we have teachers trained who are already being paid to do this, so this is a double expenditure, mm -hmm. but essential in the circumstances. We have to make sure that by the time our children get to GSAT and to high school, they have the basic fundamentals there so that we can, in fact, expect the better outcomes. Yeah. Minister, uh, tuition at the university at the tertiary <coughs> level and the funding of education at the tertiary level, that is a serious challenge. How, how is the ministry going about dealing with that challenge? First of all, we're very glad that there have been such important changes at the Student Loan Bureau. Uh, simple interest rather than com compound mm -hmm. interest. Makes a big difference. Some, uh, the rate itself being, uh, being reduced and um, there's going to be better bonding Yes, oh. and, there's all, and the credit bureau is going to make a difference because p you'll have to make sure you, you never get rid of a delinquent student loan. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, we're, we're hoping also that we can attract private capital with appropriate prudence into the student loan uh, mm -hmm. arena so that more of our bright, bright students, and there's so many more coming from the inner cities, uh, young women who are qualifying to meet our 2030 targets. Mm -hmm. For some, they're going to have to postpone and wait a year or think Ian, in terms yes. of different career choices. Yes? And I'm, uh, because we can lend to the ones that are in demand, but not so much to others. Also, parents have to start saving from very early, as we used to, in order that you're ready to contribute more and not to expect the state to pay everything. Mm -hmm. Always so reflective to speak to you and we thank you so much uh, Minister for the many ideas that you commend to our minds. Minister of Education, the Honorable Reverend Ronald Thwaites, uh, speaking to us on several issues. We thank you for your company until next week. Ian Bourne wishing you a pleasant evening. Prevent overfishing. Give our marine resources room to replenish. Protect valuable marine species from extinction. Fish sanctuaries have been created to do just that. These designated protected areas for fish and other marine life help to breed, grow, and maintain a healthy population. No one is allowed in a fish sanctuary. It is illegal. Offenders will be arrested and their fishing equipment and catch confiscated. Allowing more marine and seafood population to grow means more catch later and food security for all.
It's World Ocean Day, and we've put together a feature on our coastline and ways that we can all help to protect it. Take a look. in preserving our environment as much as possible. That's the reality. Jamaicans love going to the beach. Hardly surprising since we are a tropical island people. But we aren't the only fans. Among its many offerings, Jamaica's tourism landscape owes much to the appeal of our many miles of whites and beaches. Yet, although these gems of nature offer us both a place to play and earn, all too often, this is how we treat them. From diapers to uh, container covers, plastic, bottles, bags, you name it, it's out here. According to the U.S.-based nonprofit environmental advocacy group Ocean Conservancy, our oceans sustain us with the basic elements of life, producing half of the oxygen in the air we breathe and serving as an essential part of the water cycle. Beaches are the frontier of this essential resource, providing habitat and nesting grounds for important ocean wildlife like sea turtles and seabirds, and helping to sustain complex coastal economies. It's why local organizations like the National Environment and Planning Agency and the Urban Development Corporation regularly organize exercises to clear our beaches of the debris so carelessly discarded. The objective is really, most importantly, to raise the awareness amongst gen the general population about how our everyday activities affect our coastal resources. Because what we find is that when we dispose of garbage improperly, it ends up right back on the beach. Don't litter, don't throw garbage in the sea, in the rivers, in gullies and stuff. Just keep the environment clean. Because we want a clean environment to come in and play and swim. Polluting our beaches with trash is not just an eyesore. It affects the health of people, wildlife and economies. And what we do on land invariably ends up in the water. The result could be injury to swimmers and beach goers, wildlife being harmed from eating or getting trapped in the garbage, boat propellers being ensnared and tourists seeking more pristine environs to vacation. It's very important because if all the garbage washes away into the sea, the marine animals will choke and they will die. It will cause, it will cause pollution. The beaches are nature's gift to us, offering up a relaxing environment to get away from the stressors of life, enjoy them, and allow others to do the same. because the streets are not properly lit, especially as it gets dark. If you must be out late at night or in the evening, here are some tips or some precautions that you can take. First of all, keep in contact with your parents at all times. They need an update as to where you are at any given time. If, it, if it's possible for you to retrieve the license number or the plate number of the vehicle that you're going in, it makes things a lot easier. Avoid dark areas. Ensure that wherever you're standing is properly lit. If someone is trying to abduct you, make the loudest scream or the highest pitched yell as possible to get the attention of those in and around the area of which you're standing. And it helps in the bonding process. Just be a good kid. Road fatalities occur way too often, 
and more often than not, they happen because of a failure to obey the rules of the road. Because of incorrect driving, road infringement, persons failing to apply the road code, approximately 57% of all road accidents and fatalities are caused by this incorrect driving. Speeding, reckless overtaking, drinking and driving, and the failure to obey traffic lights and stop signs are some of the most common road infractions, infractions that lead to collisions. But the law is clear. From established speed limits to guidelines on how to overtake, the regulations are spelled out. The speed limit for road users depends on whether the roads are in built-up areas, near schools or on highways. For school zones, it's 30 km per hour, 50 km in built-up areas, 70 km per hour on main roads, 80 km on minor highways and 110 km on Highway 2000. Drinking and driving do not go together. The presence of alcohol in a driver's system is likely to affect his or her ability to make sensible decisions or even respond quickly and appropriately. So if you drive, avoid drinking altogether. And as it regards overtaking, the rules are also clear. Overtake only if the unbroken white line is on your side of the road and you should only overtake on the right side. In addition to following those basic rules, before you overtake, ask yourself these questions. Does it make sense? Is it safe? And is it legal? Because you see, a lot of times, even though the overtake may be legal, it doesn't make any sense. It's not necessary. So, overtaking is one of the major causes of accidents. It exposes one to head-on collisions. It exposes one to crashes. So we really need to explore all the areas. Is it safe? Does it make sense? And is it legal? Drivers of motor vehicles and motorcycles need to be licensed. Driver's licenses are issued only after the applicants are tested and proven competent to handle a vehicle. The process begins with an application. You take three photographs signed by just the piece, a learner's license, examination fee receipt and an application form filled out by yourself and adjust to the piece. Take it to the depot, arrange for appointment and on an appointment date you are required to do a written test and a yard test. If you are successful on the, with the yard test you are taken on the road to do a, a driving test. People who drive without a valid license are guilty of an offence and risk prosecution by the police. It's also imperative for drivers to ensure their vehicles are roadworthy. Periodic inspections are done to test their suitability for the road. We check for electrical components that they're all working like headlights, brake lights, park lights, indicators. Mechanically, your front end must be sound, brakes must be in proper working condition. That's park brake and service brake. Tires are in good working order, not showing any form of defects and the body, body condition must be fairly good condition. The inspection process differs depending on the type of vehicle and its intended purpose. Trucks, for example, have to be measured and also weighed in all dimensions to ensure they operate within the confines of the law. Pedestrians, drivers and motorcyclists should all follow these general rules in order to minimize chaos while on our roadways. The authorities have been vigilant and there are penalties for breaches. The police and the island traffic authority do random inspections island-wide to identify those who fail to keep their vehicles roadworthy. What emerges as areas of defects are defective steering, Defective brake, defective exhaust system, defective tires. Those four in particular seem to be um, very prominent. Motorists have to come to grips with the fact that they have a responsibility to ensure the fitness of their vehicles, to ensure the mechanical soundness of their vehicles um, that are used to apply the road race. And, and this is entrenched in law. The law also spells out the consequences for those who disobey the rules of the road. 
Offenders could go to prison, pay huge fines, or lose points of their licenses. When you use the road, you need to be aware of how your action affects others. I go on the car. All of us young man stop on a big road. But some people are crossed on a blind corner. When motorists have to stop on the green light to allow people to cross, it creates problems. People just can't walk out on the road, some man. From a corner, from behind vehicle, they need to be more careful, man. We have overhead bridges, pedestrian crossings, and crosswalks. Some of them even have signals to tell you when to cross. People, walk on the sidewalk. If there is none, walk on the right side. And please, if you can't find a pedestrian crossing, make sure the road clear before you cross. Obey road signs and markings. They are there for our safety. Stop at a pedestrian crossing to allow pedestrians standing at the curb to cross the road. Never drive off while a pedestrian is still on the pedestrian crossing. When driving in slow-moving traffic, avoid stopping on a pedestrian crossing. Stop to allow the clearance of the crossing before proceeding. At a junction, stop at the stop bar, not beyond it. Bus lanes are for buses only. Their use by a private vehicle constitutes a traffic offense. No vehicle other than a bus should occupy a bus bay. Do not drive beyond the stop bar in anticipation of the light changing to green. This is dangerous and is against the law. Remain at the stop bar if the queue across the junction is not moving. Blocking the junction will impede traffic flow in the other direction when the lights change to green. Obey the law. It saves money. It saves time. It saves lives. In addition to obeying the rules, here are some other tips to keep in mind. Drivers, don't use your cell phones or other electronic devices while driving. If you have to take a call, use a hands-free device or pull off the road safely. Pedestrians always walk towards oncoming vehicles and stay alert at all times and avoid unsafe conditions. June is Disaster Preparedness Month, a serious and timely observance being spearheaded by the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM. These days, technology helps us to detect approaching storms, but we should never wait on a hurricane watch or warning to start preparing. Every home should have a disaster plan. Here are some must-dos. Meet with family members and discuss the importance of preparing for any type of disaster that could affect your family unit, such as hurricanes, earthquakes, and fires. Create a disaster checklist, which should include important details such as information on telephone numbers like the fire brigade, police, and the ambulance. Install smoke detectors and a fire extinguisher in your home and ask the fire department to show you how to use it. Devise escape routes out of the house and organize drills. Do this and help reduce your risk of injury and death in the event of a disaster. and women. Equality. A message from the Bureau of Gender Affairs and Dispute Resolution Foundation, paid for by the UN Women Fund for Gender Equality. While I know myself as a creation of God, I'm also obligated to realize and remember that everyone else and everything else are also God's creation. Words of the late Maya Angelou, reminding us to be tolerant of each other. And this is where we leave you for this edition of Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, we value your feedback. So drop us a line. Send an email to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. You may also follow us on Twitter at JIS News. On behalf of the team here at the JIS, I'm Audrey Williams, wishing you a productive week.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.